My name is Rachel Baker and I'm a graduate student at the Stanford Graduate School of Education. And I'm talking today about a project I did with Eric Bettinger where we looked at the effects of individualized coaching on college persistence. So what happened was Inside Track, which is a for-profit um, college advising program based in San Francisco, um, has been partnering with universities and colleges across the country for a number of years and they've collected this large data set. So as they've partnered with schools, um, one way that they've kind of proven their worth to schools is to randomly assign students to either have a coach or not. So Inside Track has this large database um, of information on students who have received coaching or haven't received coaching, and therefore they can kind of tell the effect of the coaching on student behavior such as persistence in passing classes. So the general model here is that students um, at partner colleges are um, the ones who are assigned to have a coach are given a coach who contacts them remotely. So this is um, a different model from many models of um, mentoring or advising in higher education where the um, coach was very um, proactive in contacting students. So this coach hired through Inside Track and partnered with the university would give students a call and, say, and introduce themselves and say, hi, my name is so-and-so and I work, um, I'm from your university in Inside Track and I'm here to um, help you and provide kind of some guidance and support. Um, and the inside track coaches are trained and they have this kind of structured program that they um, use with students to kind of assess student need. Um, and then they um, call students or email students or sometimes use social media to um, provide this kind of advising. And inside track's model, which I think is interesting, so the first thing that I think is really interesting is that it's very proactive. Students don't need to contact the coaches for support, they're given the support. Um, another thing that I think is really interesting about the model um, is that um, Inside Track doesn't focus as much on academics as it does on kind of these meta academic skills such as study skills and time management and um, working with other obligations within a student's life to complete courses. Um, so, this model of coaching, which is different from what happens in many schools, um, and this Students they work with are primarily non-traditionally aged, so older than age about 22, um, and students who are attending part-time, and they're attending a number of two-year, four-year, for-profit private institutions. So there's this model, and Inside Track has a lot of data because the partner institutions with whom they work wanted, to, you know, they are paying Inside Track, so they wanted to prove um, to the schools that their, the service they were providing would be beneficial for students. So they would randomly assign students, they would take you know 900 students and randomly assign some portion of them to receive coaching and the other group wouldn't receive coaching. And then they would track these students progress over time. So over a number of years and um, when Eric Bettinger and I were approached by Inside Track to help them with this study, um, we selected the years of data. So we said we'd like data from you know 2001 and 2007 or something and then get all of the student records from those two years. And we then looked at um, students who were assigned to have a coach and those who weren't assigned to have a coach and um, looked at their university records on the number of credits they attempted, the number of credits they completed, all those things to look at the effect of having these coaches, or really the effect of being assigned to a coach on persistence behaviors. So in the table here, we can see that the persistence rates for these students, the six-month retention, the 12-month retention, is relatively low. We're seeing you know, 58% of students are persisting for six months, 44% for 12 months. But the, when we look at the treatment effect, so the um, numbers with the stars, the effect of having being assigned to a coach, we're seeing relatively large effects. So we're seeing about five percentage points. So students in the treatment group are five percentage points more likely to persist after six months and the same after um, 12 months. But that um, five percentage points on a base of 58% is a, a relatively large effect. You know, we're looking at almost 10% more likely to persist. And when we get down to um, the number of students who complete a degree, which is 30-ish um, percent for this group, um, we're seeing, you know, um, an effect size of about four percentage points, which is really large considering that the base um, for the control group is about 30%. So we're having, you know, increasing that pretty substantially. Um, and the effects were actually pretty surprising and pretty impressive. So um, like I said, these are typically non-traditional students. So they're older, they're attending part-time, most of them are working, um, and they have relatively low persistence rates overall. So, you know, after one semester, about 50 of them 50% of them have dropped out, and in terms of completing degrees or awards, the numbers are quite low. 
Um, but we see that inside track has this kind of significant and significant statistically, but also really practically effect on persistence behaviors. And so we're seeing effect size of about 12 um, percent um, on the persistence. So students who were assigned to have a coach were persisting at much higher rates than students who weren't assigned to have a coach, which leads to a lot of interesting questions about why does this model work? Um, and you know, I think what I said earlier about this very proactive coaching is really important. Um, the other important aspects are kind of um, meeting the students where they are in terms of, so I listened to a couple of calls that Inside Track gave me access to and kind of the coach would ask questions about where they were doing homework, what the obstacles were to getting homework done, things like that, and kind of meeting students um, where they were in terms of their own personal obstacles. Um, we see the effects for um, all subgroups, um, actually men more than women, which I think is really interesting. Um, a number of other policies or interventions, um, such as providing financial aid or providing um, these kind of group learning communities and things have often found effects more for women than for men. And this was one study where that wasn't the case, which I think is interesting and might say something about this mode of this, this intervention in particular and the mode of delivery for the coaching. Um, the coaching is relatively expensive for schools. It's not cheap. It, you know, schools are paying um, hundreds of dollars per student per semester. But when we look at the effect size, you know, how much bang for the buck, so to speak, are these schools getting? And we actually see that compared with other sorts of persistence interventions, such as providing more financial aid scholarships and things like that, this is actually a relatively cost-effective method. Um, so I think it leads to a lot of interesting questions about the ways that we're supporting students now as many more students are attending part-time and attending distance, you know, um, solely online or part online. This is a kind of intervention. Many of our students were online, taking classes online. And I think that this is kind of intervention providing real human contact and individualized attention. Um, this intervention really leads to a lot of interesting questions in terms of how are we providing services to students and how can schools partner with other organizations um, in cost-effective ways to increase um, persistence and retention for college students.